Hello, it's Monday, April 15th. Welcome to the GVD Nightly News. A roundup of the biggest developments making news on St. Lucia. I am Michaela Charles Noel. Good evening to you watching on Flow Channel 115, YouTube, Facebook, and those of you joining us on Boom 89.9 FM. Thank you for joining us. We begin with breaking news that on Thursday, April 11th, 2024, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force conducted a joint police operation which focused on various communities within northern and central divisions, including Grass Street, Otsa, Bacatel, Bize, Carilly, and Castries. Bize, Carilly, and Castries, Marigo, and Ancillary. This operation involved the execution of warrants to search for property patrols and, tra and traffic operations aimed at ensuring public safety and law enforcement. During the operation, law enforcement officials discovered and seized one 16-gauge shotgun, which was found in Ancillary. No arrests have been made following this discovery. Four motorists were issued tickets for traffic violations. The Grosile Vendors Association have been, has been honored at the island's prestigious tourism awards, the Grammys. At Saturday's award ceremony, the, the association was recognized for its outstanding contribution to community development for hosting the Grosile Friday Night Street Party. The event is the longest running activity for its kind in the Caribbean. The association recognized an award of special recognition for its unwavering efforts in fostering community spirit, promoting local culture, and enhancing the tourism experience in St. Lucia. As St. Lucia gets set to celebrate World Creativity and Innovation Week from April 15th to the 21st, the Department of Innovation and in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation Science, Technology and Vocational Training has planned a number of activities in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. As part of the festivities, Honorable Minister Sean Edward has realized, sorry, has released an address to commemorate the occasion. Joseph Scampito, the father of innovation as far back as 1919, defined innovation as the introduction of new production processes, new products, new materials or resources, new markets, and new competitive organizational forms. Yes, innovation was a concept worthy of exploration more than a century ago, and it is just as relevant today as it was then. Simply put, Innovation is really a process of discovering new and creative means to introduce fresh, value-adding experiences to our daily lives. When innovation is successful, it revolutionizes the economic structures of countries for the continued creation of new processes, new systems, new goods and services. The formulation of new structures, however, can only stem from creativity the use of imagination or original ideas. It is the ability to use information, material, and skills to produce something that did not exist before. In education parlance, creativity is greatest of the higher order thinking skills according to Bloom's cognitive domain. Therefore, by virtue of its name, the genre of creative arts is populated by individuals who continuously produce new or original work which allow the society to feel, think, reflect, analyze, and appreciate itself on an individual or collective level. In preparation for this year's Innovation Week, I spent some time with contributors to the creative arts and got a better understanding of their processes. I needed to get a first-hand feel for what our creatives experience as they navigate the complexities of designing a product to fulfill a need in the fashion and festival market. I wanted to feel the emotions that went into the production of rhythm and songs that express the mood of our people. 
and to further partake in the translation of that music into the movement and performances that we can all participate in for enjoyment and expression. It is amazing watching the creation of a visual representation of our thoughts or reflections of our society. These experiences have led me to a space of self-reflection and self-discovery, and I am even more deeply appreciative of the acts of creativity, the innovation displayed by those I encountered. I better understand the role that we all can play, recognizing that we all have creative skills that can be applied to whatever areas we choose. I too will be delving deeper into my creative self. The juxtaposition of this reflection and these experiences against this year's theme has given me an even greater appreciation for the call to action. Spark your creativity, accelerate your impact. I therefore invite you to join the Department of Innovation this week in showing appreciation to our creative sector while simultaneously discovering your own creativity. Given that the color orange represents creativity and innovation, I ask all St. Lucians from all walks of life to proudly wear a touch of orange on Friday, April 19th in recognition of the 9th SDG or Sustainable Development Goal, Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure. Everyone is invited to the annual National Symposium on Creativity and Innovation to be held that same day, 19th April, from 9 a.m. at the Constitution Park in the city of Castries. Just over a month ago, collectively as a country, we recommitted to moving Duvan Assam, building a nation for unity, resilience, and creativity. In our 45th year of independence, as proud St. Lucians, let us all use our creativity to accelerate our growth as a people as we celebrate world creativity and innovation. <laughs> Thank you. You are watching the GVD News. Still to come, the opposition. This is comments from the SLP camp and a retired lieutenant colonel talks crime fighting techniques. Why pay full price for your mobile when you can pay half? Just bundle your home internet and mobile services with Flow and save 50% on your mobile bill. That's money in your pockets every month. Plus now you get free YouTube and WhatsApp data. And you can share your plan with up to three other numbers. Upgrade now and get a free smartphone. Switch and keep your number. Learn more at discoverflow.co so, this is goodbye. A professional one. A meticulous one. One with unique options. And total support. With multiple locations, we are focused on your hour of need. And so, this is the final goodbye. Be it traditional, at sea or cremation, the Crick family will be here to help your family during life's most difficult moments. Crick's Funeral Home, telephone 452-2780 and 459-9212. candy, deliciously healthy. At Great Vision Designs, we value our customers and provide cutting-edge customer service. Great Vision Designs specializes in television broadcasting and live streaming of funerals, sports events, weddings, 
meetings, shows, and more. Call us today at 722-6542 or 726-9914 or follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Great Vision Designs, coverage you can count on. Why pay full price for your mobile? When you can pay half. Just bundle your home internet and mobile services with Flow and save 50% on your mobile bill. That's money in your pockets every month. Plus now you get free YouTube and WhatsApp data. And you can share your plan with up to three other numbers. Upgrade now and get a free smartphone. Switch and keep your number. Learn more at discoverflow.co So, this is goodbye. A professional one, a meticulous one, one with unique options, and total support. With multiple locations, we are focused on your hour of need. And so, this is the final goodbye. Be traditional, at sea or cremation, the Crick family will be here to help your family during life's most difficult moments. Crick's Funeral Home, telephone 452-2780 and 459-9212. Paying is faster and easier with Flow FastPay. Use your MasterCard or Visa and pay from anywhere. Log on to discoverflow.co slash FastPay and press consumer. Select your country and enter your account number. Enter the amount to be paid and an email address. Enter your credit card information. You'll receive a payment confirmation with the transaction details. Along with a receipt to your email address. It's fast, safe and easy. Blow. Keeping you connected. Ice candy, deliciously healthy. At Great Vision Designs, we value our customers and provide cutting-edge customer service. Great Vision Designs specializes in television broadcasting and live streaming of funerals, sports events, weddings, meetings, shows, and more. Call us today at 722-6542 or 726-9914 or follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Great Vision Designs, coverage you can count on. Welcome back to the broadcast. The United Workers Party has called into question what they deem as racist remarks made by a stalwart of the St. Lucia Labour Party. According to a press statement released by the UWP on April 12th, during last week's episode of Can I Help You, Sir Calix George, a senior member of the St. Lucia Labour Party, referred to supporters of the opposition as house slaves. The missive, dis the missive describes Sir George's comments as racism and bigotry, bigotry sorry, stating that their only purpose is to sow division in the country. Enshrined in the Constitution, the release reads, 
is the right of freedom of association and the right of all citizens, regardless of political affiliation, to choose whatever party they desire to support on election day. Therefore, according to the statement, Sir George's disparaging comments have maligned the integrity of all members of the UWP and the 47,000 St. Lucian citizens who voted for the opposition during the last general election. The UWP has called on Prime Minister Philippe J. Pierre to distance himself and his party from such blatant displays of racism and bigotry and to condemn its egregious remarks endorsed by his ministry. Retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Elwin St. Rose made an appearance on Newsmaker Live on April 10, 2024 to outline his dissatisfaction with the government's crime resolution efforts. St. Rose believes that the greater strides can be achieved towards fostering a safer St. Lucia. Chloe Camille has the details in this report. The island's homicide count now stands at 28 for the year 2024. The shared number of unsolved cases has left citizens concerned with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force's methods. On Thursday's episode of Newsmaker Live, a retired Lieutenant Colonel, Elwin St. Rose, expressed his concerns along with his dissatisfaction with the government's efforts. St. Rose shared a number of strategies that he believes can be implemented to help with crime resolution. He has urged law enforcement to contemplate these suggestions. We have a strategy where we say we are going to have more police officers. We are going to do better training for our police officers. We are going to have a forensic system where we are going to become experts in lift, lifting fingerprints from crime scenes. We are going to manage crime scenes more effectively. We are going to have electronic surveillance. We're going to put cameras in the crime zones so that we can see what happened, how they happened, were they wearing masks, were they tall, were they short, were they disguised. Th that, there shouldn't be any secret about that. Se having a secret is not going to make you more effective. There is nothing secret about a crime strategy. On March 4, 2024, the MP for Mikud North, Jeremiah Norbert, was appointed to the position of Minister for Crime Prevention and Persons with Disabilities. St. Rose claims that Norbert has not taken up the task that he has been allotted and has neglected to address the public's concerns. We put a, a, a new Minister for Crime Prevention a month ago. I have not heard anything from him except the first day or so when he was sworn in. I think the very day when he was sworn in on the 3rd of March or the 2nd of March, I have not, we have not heard from him since. He's not told us, well, there are three things we can do, three things we want to do, and go in the background and work. We don't know what he's going to do. We don't know what he's about because he's not told us. And I'm saying that's not enough. For the GBD TV News, this is Chloe Camel reporting. Once again, Housing Minister Richard Frederick has found himself in hot water for statements made on Thursday night talk show, Can I Help You? This time for derogatory comments aimed at a former government minister, Fortuna Bellrose, and a scarving attack on a longtime vendor, Ursula Fanis. The women's arm of the United Workers' Party has taken umbrage at these remarks by the minister and has released a statement condemning his actions. arm of the United Workers Party unequivocally condemns the continued reprehensible and misogynistic behavior exhibited by government minister Richard Frederick in the office of the prime minister. His repeated use of derogatory and demeaning language on his talk show, Can I Help You with Richard Frederick? is a blatant affront to the dignity of women 
and an egregious abuse of his platform and power. Minister Frederick targeted former government minister Fortuna Belrose, making derogatory comments about her lack of hair. A deeply personal attribute that should never be subjected to ridicule. Such language is not only offensive, but also reinforces damaging stereotypes and devalues the significant contributions of women in our society. In another deplorable act, Richard Frederick, the minister responsible for vendor affairs, used his show to once again bully and attack a known longtime vendor, Ursula Fannis, also known as Joycelyn Fannis. Rather than addressing her concerns through proper official channels, he chose to humiliate her publicly, divulging sensitive and confidential information about her financial obligations in a most unethical manner. The women's arm of the United Workers' Party supports the principles of decency and the enshrined rights of equality and justice. We stand in solidarity with Mistress Bell Rose, Miss Fannis, and all the other women who have been subjected to such vile attacks. We demand that Minister Frederick resign from his ministerial posts immediately in order to prevent further occurrences of the abusive behavior. His actions cannot be overlooked or dismissed as merely controversial. They are harmful and perpetuate misogyny. As advocates for the rights and empowerment of women, the women's arm is resolute in its pursuit of a society where every individual is respected and valued equally. We urge all members of the community and relevant authorities to stand with us in condemning these actions and to work to eradicate this type of abuse from our public office. Thank you. A series of open day events in communities around the island has gotten underway in a bid to strengthen the bonds between parents and children while the successes of the community after school program in actively engaging parents in the social development of their children. Spearheaded by the Community Development Unit of the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment, the latest open day took place towards the end of March in Blusha. A series of open day events in communities around the island has gotten underway in a bid to strengthen the bond between parents and children while highlighting the successes of the community after school program in actively engaging parents in the social development of their children. Spearheaded by the Community Services Unit of the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment, the latest open day took place towards the end of March in Blasha. Odula Lena, Social Transformation Officer for MIKUD, stated the importance of this initiative which allowed parents to interact with staff while observing the participation of children in different activities. Our program supports academic growth and fosters social and emotional development through interactive and engaging activities. At the event, parents can explore the diverse range of activities and resources available to their children in our program. From educational workshops to creative arts and physical activities, we offer a holistic approach to after-school care. At the Open Day event, children enthusiastically showcase their tie-dye t-shirt projects, highlighting their artistic skills and creativity. This vibrant display not only provided a delightful experience, but also promoted creativity, skill development, and cultural appreciation. I think it's a very positive thing for the children to to be able to express themselves, to also be able to speak some positivity into their interaction with each other. And I hope they can go in society and actually put into work what they have learned um, during the time in class. 
as parents, Kendall Alphonse and Valerie Reynolds reflected on their experience at the community after-school open day event. Their words encapsulated the sentiments shared by many. You know the children, uh, some of them neglected and then they play a lot, so the after-school program is very positive. By promoting a nurturing environment for children during the after-school hours, fostering holistic development through educational and recreational activities, the Ministry of Equity continues to play its part in providing a supportive environment for children on the island. From the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment, Chevroy Marius. The news will be right back. Why pay full price for your mobile when you can pay half? Just bundle your home internet and mobile services with Flow and save 50% on your mobile bill. That's money in your pockets every month. Plus now you get free YouTube and WhatsApp data. And you can share your plan with up to three other numbers. Upgrade now and get a free smartphone. Switch and keep your number. Learn more at discoverflow.co Ice candy, deliciously healthy. At Great Vision Designs, we value our customers and provide cutting-edge customer service. Great Vision Designs specializes in television broadcasting and live streaming of funerals, sports events, weddings, meetings, shows, and more. Call us today at 722-6542 or 726-9914 or follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Great Vision Designs. Coverage you can count on. Lucilex remote options are available to serve you every weekday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call or send a WhatsApp message to 285-6796-285-7859-285-3593-285-3329 or 285-8640 or send an email to customer support at lucilex.com for assistance. Call 457-4433 to get bill balances. Use myaccount.lucilex.com for detailed account information and to make online bill payments using a credit or debit card or online bank account. Customers may also take advantage of Shopee's online or walk-in service. Lucilec encourages you to use the available options for doing business with us remotely. So, this is goodbye. A professional one. A meticulous one. One with unique options and total support with multiple locations we are focused on your hour of need and so this is the final goodbye be traditional at sea or cremation the crick family will be here to help your family during life's most difficult moments crick's funeral home telephone 452-2780 and 459-9212.
Thank you for staying with the broadcast. Steps are being taken to resolve a situation currently unfolding at the St. Lucia Postal Services. On Thursday, April 11th, staff attached to every major branch of the Postal Service downed their tools, citing disrespect at the hands of their employer. The conflict erupted with the appointment of a new Postmaster General. A vacancy employees say could have been competently filled from among their ranks. We have the details in this report. Information reaching our news desk suggests that employees of the St. Lucia Postal Service have been advised to return to work while the union negotiates on their behalf. The postal workers, who are represented by the St. Lucia Civil Service Association, had downed their tools last Thursday after a new postmaster general was installed, allegedly without affording any of the staff the opportunity for advancement. Sources close to the conflict suggest that one employee in particular had been acting in the capacities of postmaster general, human resource manager, and deputy postmaster for a period of seven months. Yet, when it came time to fill the postmaster general position, she was purportedly denied the opportunity to apply. In solidarity, her fellow staff members staged protest action, refusing to work unless the matter was addressed. A letter to the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Francis Fontenelle, was penned by the CSA on April 5, 2024. The correspondence outlined the employee's grievances and requested clarification on behalf of its members. It remains to be seen what steps will be taken by the Public Service Commission to rectify the situation. Reporting for the GVD TV News, I am Eldris Charles. Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Alan Chastney, has been invited to participate in the 2024 Global Parliamentary Forum, jointly organized with the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, which will take place in person in Washington, D.C. from the 15th to the 16th of April 2024, ahead of the 2024 Spring Meetings. The Leader of the Opposition will be out of state from 14th to 20th. April 2024. The Debt and Investment Unit in the Department of Finance announced the enhancement of the new Public Debt Management Act 2023. The commencement of the Public Debt Management Act represents a significant step forward to ensure sound fiscal management and sustainable economic growth. This long landmark legislation reaffirms the government's commitment to responsible debt management practices and will contribute to the overall resilience of St. Lucia's economy. More in this report from Glenn Simon. Support you. The government of St. Lucia has announced the enactment of the new Public Debt Management Act 2023, which took effect on April 1, 2024. Deputy Director of Finance with Responsibility for Debt and Investment in the Department of Finance, Vera John Emanuel, pointed out that this landmark legislation consolidates and modernizes laws to strengthen the management of public debt, ensure prudent borrowing practices and sustainable fiscal management. The new Act replaces the National Savings and Development Bond Act and the Treasury Bill Act. So, no longer we will be raising our bonds through parliament utilizing those two pieces of legislation particularly the nsdb act um, this legislation also brings forth to instill greater transparency and accountability as it pertains to public debt management um, it requires government to report to parliament in terms of the medium term debt strategy also providing audiences with what the approved borrowings was and how did the, the unit, the debt management unit, went on to um, contract those debts, the terms and so forth. So much greater transparency will be coming into the parliament through that piece of legislation. Emmanuel noted that the legislation also calls for the establishment of a public debt management advisory committee. That com committee will be reviewing all borrowings and advising the Minister of Finance and the Cabinet on the way forward in terms of the uh, borrowings. The mandate of the Debt and Investment Unit is to provide funding for the budget through loans, bonds and treasury bills. 
So when you go through that piece of legislation, it will tell you about raising government funds at a minimum cost subject to a prudent degree of risk. Um, though we took some parts from the the past legislation to incorporate in this one, this piece of legislation is added with much more features. It has coverage, more coverage like overdrafts and and um, payables was not part of government debt stock before. Right now with this piece of legislation, we will be including the payables in the government debt and, and debt stock. The key provisions of the Public Debt Management Act include transparency and accountability, debt sustainability, risk management, effective debt management practices, and a strengthened institutional framework. The Debt and Investment Unit encourages stakeholders and the public to peruse the legislation, which can be found on the websites of the Government of St. Lucia, the Ministry of Finance, and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank's website. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. And finally from us tonight, the disclosure that the total cost of the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project stands at 265 million EC dollars has sparked concerns among many including the members of the opposition. In a recently held discussion, Deputy Leader of the UWP and former Economic Development Minister Guy Joseph speculated as to how the figures were ascertained. Joseph also called on the Prime Minister to offer an explanation to the populace. We have the details in this report. During his budget presentation, Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre listed the completion cost of St. Jude's Hospital as 265 million EC dollars. This figure has baffled many who recalled previous pronouncements made by the SLP administration on this contentious subject. Among those raising questions is Deputy Leader of the UWP, Guy Joseph. During a recent discussion on the budget, Joseph called on the Prime Minister to explain the basis of the exorbitant cost. The reconstruction of St. Jude's Hospital has been a hot-button issue for many years, with successive governments making failed attempts to deliver the much-needed medical facility. The former Kenny Anthony administration commenced the rehabilitation of the original structure, yet failed to complete the project. During his tenure, opposition leader Alan Chastney chose to construct a modern facility despite heavy criticisms from the then opposition. At this time, it was deemed that refurbishing the original structure would have been quicker and more cost-effective, a course of action pursued by the current administration. Hence, the raised eyebrows at the $265 million project price that. Prime Minister owes the country an explanation mm -hmm. about the real cost of St. Jude because this is the same government that said five million dollars and John Peters said it <laughs> five to twenty million dollars and he was part of the team um, the member for library said um, some chemical and some paint and that's what St. Jude needed I uh, let's say that would cost a million dollars while there has been no announcement that any contracts were signed in relation to St. Jude's Hospital, it is common knowledge that remedial works had commenced on the building. In this vein, Joseph speculated as to whether the cost of these works factored into the price quoted by Prime Minister Pierre. So is the true cost of completing St. Jude now $265 million? And if the borrowing from the Saudis was only 205 million and a portion of it is to go to the stadium, then is it a situation where Renault has done maybe a $65 million worth of work at the stadium that he is to be paid so, for? So for GVD TV News, this is Sherry's chair that you're reporting. We've come to the end of the GVD TV news. Join us at 10 a.m. for another news update. On behalf of the entire team, I am Michaela Charles Noel. Thank you for watching. Good night. So 
This is goodbye. A professional one. A meticulous one. One with unique options. And total support. With multiple locations, we are focused on your hour of need. And so, this is the final goodbye. Be traditional, at sea or cremation, the Crick family will be here to help your family during life's most difficult moments. Crick's Funeral Home, telephone 452-2780 and 459-9212. Paying is faster and easier with Blow Fast Pay. Use your MasterCard or Visa and pay from anywhere. Log on to discoverflow.co slash fastpay and press consumer. Select your country and enter your account number. Enter the amount to be paid and an email address. Enter your credit card information. You'll receive a payment confirmation with the transaction details along with a receipt to your email address. It's fast, safe, and easy. Blow, keeping you connected. Why pay full price for your mobile when you can pay half? Just bundle your home internet and mobile services with Flow and save 50% on your mobile bill. That's money in your pockets every month. Plus, now you get free YouTube and WhatsApp data. Share your plan with up to three other numbers. Upgrade now and get a free smartphone. Switch and keep your number. Learn more at discoverflow.co. Ice candy, deliciously healthy. The death is announced of Alfreza Alexander, better known as Avi, or Sister Alexander, of Dirisu. She passed away on Sunday, 24th March 2024, at St. Jude's Hospital, at 7.15 a.m. She was 89 years old. The funeral service for the late Alfreza Alexander will be held on Wednesday, 17th April 2024, at Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall. New Dock Road, Fewfort, at 2 p.m. Her body will be laid to rest at the Margaret O'Brien Private Cemetery. Her body now lies at Lazarus Funeral Home, New Dock Road, Fewfort. May she rest in perfect peace. With broken hearts, we announce the death of Mary Teresa Bell, better known as Cassell, of Black Bayview Fort. She passed away on Thursday, 21st March 2024, at her residence at 11 a.m. She was 93 years old. The funeral service for the late Mary Teresa Bell will be held on Thursday, 25th April 2024, at Our Lady of the Assumption Roman Catholic Church, Fewfort. Fort. At 3 p.m., the body will be laid to rest at the Michael O'Brien Private Cemetery. The body now lies at Lazarus Funeral Home, New York Road, Fewfort. May she rest in peace.
we announce the death of John Francis, commonly known as Smile, Furno, Sito, or Uncle Smile, a retired employee of Ford Motor Company in London, originally from Deriso, who at the time of his death resided at Old Victoria Road, Montfortune, Castries. He passed away at his residence on Thursday, 14th March, 2024. He was 91 years old. The funeral service for the late John Francis will be held on Thursday, 18th April, 2024 at the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception at 2 p.m. His body will be laid to rest at the Shock Cemetery. His body now lies at Rambali's Funeral Parlor, Calvary Road, Castries. May he rest in perfect peace. With deep sorrow, we announce the death of Bon Duma, better known as Rata, of Olion Denry. He passed away on Thursday, 22nd February 2024, at the Rich Four Highway in Denry. He was 47 years old. The funeral service for the late Bon Duma will be held on Friday, 26 April 2024, at St. Michael's Roman Catholic Church in Larishus. Denry. His body will be laid to rest at the Larishus Cemetery. 
The Body Now Lies, at Rambali's Funeral Parlor, Calvary Road, Castries. May he rest in perfect peace. of Great Vision Designs would like to express its sincere condolences to the bereaved families.